Hey, welcome back to another video from Handyman University. My name is Brennan. Today's video, we're going to be talking about how to effectively schedule handyman jobs. I know when I first started my business, this was probably the most difficult thing for me to get. Uh, I assume I'm not the only one. Maybe I am. So if this doesn't pertain to you, you don't have to watch the video, obviously. Um, but if there's something you could use some help with, then I suggest maybe watching this video and hopefully feeling a little bit better about the situation by the end. So anyways, scheduling handyman jobs can be pretty difficult, particularly in the summer, spring, maybe fall months. This tends to be the busiest time of year, um, depending on where you are. I am in upstate New York. And so I'd say about mid February, but mostly like March to November is about the very like busy season. Like there's work nonstop. Phones always ring. Got to turn people away. Can't keep up with it. Um, Got to work weekends, long nights, all this stuff, right? Because there's so much work and you want to take advantage of it while you can, because for me, it always slows down from that November to when it picks up in the spring, about February again, um, but doesn't really pick up till March. So anyways, scheduling jobs. So what I learned is you, it, it really just takes time before you can actually schedule efficient, uh, efficiently. So what would happen to me is I would schedule all these jobs as they would come in, right? And I would just overbook myself. I would book myself to the point, I tried to do like four or five jobs in a day and it just, things would come up that would make the job run longer or I just completely underestimated how long it would take me to do something or the customer would have extra stuff that they wanted done and I was already there. So I was like, okay, let's just do it because it doesn't make sense to come back, blah, blah, blah. All the stuff I would have to, at the end of the day or whatever, midday, call people, be like, hey, sorry, things are running late. Can we do it this day? But this doesn't even take into account the weather, okay? So it rains a lot here. And if you're doing jobs that are weather dependent, well, this is gonna set you back even more. And so what happened to me, um, my first summer in business, is I ended up being about a month, month and a half behind, which was a very bad place to be. Made a lot of people mad. I was stressed out all the time, working my brains out, trying to keep up with everything, trying to make everything balanced. It just was not great. So. All this to say is scheduling comes with experience. So what my problem was is I didn't understand yet how long things took me to do. I didn't account uh, for anything going wrong, didn't account for weather going wrong, and I just took too much on it and didn't know how to say no. So that is probably the main thing that I've overcome is now I know how long the jobs that I do is gonna take me, gotten good at estimating. I don't try to put too much in one day, and so it's just a few basic things. So really, um, what I like to do is try to leave one full day or a half a day each week open where I can take on last minute calls or at the very least, it gives me a buffer for other jobs to run long. So that's one way I've kind of helped with this. And and to, to clear things up, this summer, I was only at the most two days behind and that was just for a short term. So I really cleaned up the schedule this year. Uh, things went very smoothly, too smoothly, to be honest. Um, it was kind of scary and maybe it was a fluke, but these things have definitely helped. So what another good strategy that I, I actually got this talking to my tax um, preparer uh, last or this last um, tax season here, he was saying he was like he, he was trying to give me some business advice, which I definitely appreciate. And uh, he was saying like, well, what do you do like? during the, when, when you, like, are you working every day in the summer? I'm like, well, no, I mean, sometimes if it rains, I can't work, right? Well, he was like, well, why don't you just have a bunch of, because people call for inside work during the summer, right? So he said, why don't you just take those customers and when you do the estimate, say, hey, look, for a discounted rate, would you mind being put on this list? And essentially, this is the rainy day list. So anytime there's a rainy day, can we call you up, see if it's going to work for you that day, show up, we'll knock out your job. And because of this, for being flexible, uh, we'll give you a discount. And that was huge. Um, that worked really well for me and definitely going to keep that in my business. Um, that I don't know why I never thought of that before. If I got an inside job, I just line it up and knock it out as like as it came but if you can get, not everyone's going to go for this, but a lot of people are going to go for this and they understand that the summer is your busy time and everyone loves a discount. 
And a lot of times people have been waiting for these jobs to get done for months um, anyways, weeks, months, whatever. And so they're going to be like, okay, yeah, I can wait a little bit longer just to know that it's going to actually get done. That's the biggest thing. As long as they know that, hey, this is on the schedule, like this is going to get done at some point, that's enough for them because before they had no timeline of anything, nothing was ever going to get done. So um, that also has been huge this summer and that helped a lot with trying, with keeping the schedule full and also just not getting behind because I could prioritize the inside work while the weather was good. And then as soon as the weather got bad, I could then go to my to my list and be like, hey, can we show up this day? And ideally, you get a bunch of them. Um, I was thinking cat. Eventually, you get a bunch of jobs lined up so that you're you're booked. I mean, you can book several a day. Or if someone says, no, today's not going to work, then you're good. You can go to the next one. So anyways, that's the biggest thing. Um, lastly, where, where do you keep all the schedule? So I was doing... I just had like a little calendar booklet. I don't think I have it in here. It doesn't look like it. Um, it was basically just like a like a size of a notebook, like something like this, but it was a calendar planner. Uh, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I'll just write down every job. Um, here's the day, here's this, whatever. Um, go and do an estimate this day, write it all down and just keep it in there, which is great. It worked well, but now this year, um, I have Jobber for my CRM and it's got a schedule built in and I really like it because you can take an estimate, turn it into an invoice and then put it on the schedule. Customer can see that it was on the schedule. They can see everything. Just keeps it all really like right here and everything together. I really like it. Um, and then you can assign these jobs off the calendar to different workers. So I'm assuming most of you is just you working. Um, but like for me, I'm a partners with my brother this year. So I have my brother he goes and does jobs. I go and do jobs. So we kind of split, kind of treat it like almost two individual businesses and then we'll come together on the big jobs or if we just have small jobs that need two hands, stuff like that, right? So now it'll be easy enough. And and I handle all the um, like customers, uh, estimates, like all the office work side of things, right? So now it's just easy for me to relay onto him what we're going to do. Be like, hey, just send it to him be like, hey, you're gonna go here and this is what the estimate's gonna do. It's got the estimate there for him, got the notes. I can write him notes, give him pictures of what needs to happen. All that stuff's right there. So yeah, anyways, um, and that also I think that's definitely helped with the schedule a lot too, just having another set of hands where if things running long, he can stay on the job. I can go to the next job and get that going. And so it just kind of gives a little bit of an overlay. So anyways, hopefully this helps. Hopefully this makes sense. Biggest thing to recap, Learn how to estimate your time. Things are going to take longer than you expect, especially when you first start. You'll get the hang of it, but just give yourself a buffer and adjust accordingly. If you give yourself too much time one week, well, okay, you know next week I don't need this much time. Things don't take this long. Cut it down, right? It's just a, it's just a big learning process. You'll get the hang of it. And hopefully some of this helps a little bit, like I said, but that's pretty much it.